Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? Probably never. What I do know is that this is still 4F Beauty. This top continues to fall off this shoulder. And if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. You will have seen from the thumbnail the title. And if you've read any of it, the description. This is episode 51 of my photo inspiration series. I, I didn't even think I'd get to 10, let alone 51. I'm delighted to have a returning beauty with me this time, the lovely Katie uh, from Makeup for Lost Time. So if you want to find out exactly which picture she's chosen, which palette or palettes I decide to use today, and more importantly what this looks like in the glorious Technicolor, and then my friends, you have the best seat in the house. Sammy has returned from his night shift to confirm. It is time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, I am back. I have decent daylight. For the time being, it would seem, there is no drilling and no banging, although it did go on for quite a few days, which is why you've not had films yet this week. But to keep everything crossed except your eyes, otherwise you won't be able to see what's going on, uh, that uh, we actually managed to get through this film. Right, you will have seen from the intro and from the um, thumbnail and everything that this is episode 51 of my pick series and it is with the lovely Katie from Makeup for Lost Time. Now, Katie is diametrically opposite to me. I'm calm, I'm soothing, I'm relaxed and she's a powerhouse of energy with a little bit of a potty mouth. Um, but I absolutely love, 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 love watching her films uh, and for some reason she seems to like mine and uh, we decided we wanted to do another pic together. Now, I've got a load of photos where alcohol has been fast frozen and then looked at under a really, really high intensity microscope. And it brings up all kinds of colours you wouldn't expect to see. So this, for example, is whiskey. And you can see there's yellows, orange, red, black, but there's also a hint of navy blue. But there's no brown. So, that's the picture that Katie chose from all the different ones that I sent her and uh, basically the rules for pick if you've not watched it before <clears throat> you can only use colours that are in the picture so I'm limited to yellow, orange, red, black and blue that's it I can't add any other colours is there any white? I've got it on my phone is there any white in there anywhere? No, there's no white at all. All of the light parts are just very, very light yellow. So, <clears throat> that's the colours that I'm limited to. I can't add colours in that aren't there. And I don't have to use all of the colours in the picture. So, 
<clears throat> that's the two rules. Only use colours in the picture. Don't have to use all of them. Simple, right? But you'd be amazed how different the looks are that we both produce. You know, I've like I said, this is episode 51. And so far we've not had a single episode where the looks are exactly the same. We've had a couple where they were more restricted on the number of colours in the picture where they were similar but they still weren't exactly the same um, this does however still remain a teaching channel so that means that the film will be zoomed in to just my eyes it does mean when I'm looking down to clean the brush or add more pigment you get a lovely shot of my widow's peak but that's a fair trade-off for actually being able to see what's going on. Uh, I also go at a speed that beginners can keep up with. So if you are a little bit more expert and want to speed me up, feel free. Won't be offended. I won't even know about it unless you tell me. And even if you do tell me, I'm still not going to be offended. Um, a lot of people have deep set eyes but I think they have hooded lids understandable because I see big beauty gurus still saying the same thing I've got hooded lids and I look at it and I think mm, no you don't it's understandable because the way that makeup wears throughout the day is very similar on both eye types however there is a difference to how to apply your makeup to get the best initial look and the longest wear time. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment. It will just be my eyes on screen. I'll talk you through how to work out which eye type you have and how best to apply makeup depending on your eye type. The palette that I'm going to be using today is Sample Beauty Equalizer palette which I have to get the light right because it's spot lamination okay. and she looks like this and the reason I like this one is because we have yellow, orange, red, black and blue and for each matte, we have a corresponding shimmer. Which is awesome. So, here's the clip. And I will be back at the other end of the clip to start putting pigments on my eyelids. See you in just a moment. Now, um... My eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to 
take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to start off with a very tapered blending brush. And I'm going to go into the. I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go into the red first, which is Queen, which is the red matte. I've not used this palette before, so I genuinely have no idea how the pigmentation will behave. But I have tried a couple of their other palettes, and I have used Equalizer too. So hopefully it will behave in the same manner. Now, we're going to be doing the Viennese Waltz blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason we do that, rather than just the windscreen wiper, I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds, skin on my eyelids moves, but I know slim teenagers who have the same issue. If you just rely on the windscreen wiper, that's when you can get the issue of your lid folding over and you get those telltale white stripes. Always hold the brush at the end. If the um, handle is long enough, you can brace the end of it against the palm of your hand to stabilise the other end, if you need to. Right, I'm actually going to start this where my natural crease is. If you've moved your crease, put this wherever you've moved it to. And I always start at the outside edge because I find it does deposit too much in terms of pigment. 
it's much easier to deal with when your nose is not in the way. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't been a good one, then I sincerely hope that tomorrow is better for you. Pull this down onto the outer edge of the mobile lid. And just do my usual flick up at the edge here. That's actually blended on really nicely. Reds are not the easiest of colours to create. So I'm really happy with how that's gone on. the start of your day then I hope my dear that it is as fabulous as you are the reason I do each eye rather than doing one eye and then going back to do the other one is because there can be times when due to fibro my lids can swell and the problem I get then is that I do exactly the same shape on both eye but when I relax they appear different and if I'd already put other colours on and blending it, I wouldn't necessarily know which shade I needed to adjust to make them match. I'm not overly worried about any fallout, I should be tidying this up with some micellar water shortly. Because I always do my eyes first. I never used to, but the older I get, the more fallout I get. So I figured it was time. Plus, to be honest, it does make life a lot easier. Right, I'm just going to clean that brush off on a clean washcloth. One of, um, one of Katie's series that I like, whenever she's using a new palette, she likes to do a pop the palettes a cherry. Those of you old enough will know exactly what that means, and those of you who don't know what it means, wait a few years and ask your mum and dad. Or Google it. Right, I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to the orange which is a vitamin. What I like about these equaliser palettes is that the, the names are linked. So like the red one that was Queen, the shimmer version is of hearts. And this is vitamin and the shimmer version is just the letter C so I love that. So I'm going to use this half on the red, half off the red. And just start to build up this orange shade. I do sometimes struggle here and here where I get super dry patches and they just do not want to blend. 
this appears to be behaving itself quite nicely today. This is really a neon orange, I'm loving it. You can see I took it all the way along the red. He hasn't rung the bell, so I'm guessing that means everything is fitted through the door. Yay! Oh, balls! No, he must have just clonked the door as he left because he's not standing there. That's good. Right, as I said, I ran this all the way along the red. I'm coming back up at a slight angle. Do a slightly different shape to normal today. Just because it's been so long since I've played with makeup because of the um the building work next door because I don't play with makeup on days when hubby's at home usually unless I know he's going to be out in the garden because regular viewers know how disturbing he can be and distracting for me um, So that's, you know, two days of the week that I don't get to play with makeup. Um, and we have a bubble with his mum. So we pop up to see her every other weekend. Just to make sure she's okay and doesn't need anything. Because she's in her 60s and you put the one kidney and everything, so we're in a bubble with her. And um, so those days I, I genuinely don't muck about with makeup too much because. It either means I have to take it all off before I head out to go up to his mum's or I've got to take all of my cleansing stuff with me, which can be surprisingly heavy. So, and then when the next sort of two days that you would normally be filming, and you can't because of noise pollution, I had one day knocked out because a neighbour two doors that way was having scaffolding poles taken down. Scaffolders are not quiet people. And um, the clanging as they just dropped scaffolding pipes from the top of the house to the bottom. Plus some of the language they were shouting at each other. I was getting picked up on camera, so that was a day that I couldn't film. I thought, well, that's okay, I've, I've got two more days I can film with before the film needs to go up. And then unfortunately they had three days worth of um, building works, so never mind. Right, I'm going to go, again, I've cleaned the brush off, still using the same brush, and I'm going to go into a rubber, which is the yellow. If you're wondering what the corresponding 
shade name is it's duck so again half on the orange half off I'm just going to start blending this yellow into the edge of the orange and then continue that across and down It's weird, the orange is a really bright neon, but the red and the yellow either side of it aren't, which is a little weird. I'm just going to build this yellow up a bit. Now, with my micellar water on a pad, just to show you how I'm going to be tidying this up. Yes, I could have used tape. My view of tape is if it's sticky enough to stop powder from going underneath the edge of it then it's sticky enough that it will pull on your skin when you remove it. And you will see on this eye when I come to do the lid shade I actually have to break my own rule about stretching the lid out because you see this deep crease in here that was caused by doctors pulling my eye around when I was five years old oh I should really have brushed this off a bit I'm getting a fair amount of fallout and then I did that side as well so never mind I'm actually going to pop Nobody yellow matte on that lid anyway. Oh, see a blooming thing when I close this eye. Because I'm blinding that one in case you're new. Yeah, when they um, pulled this around when I was five years old have actually caused that damage to cause that additional creasing that's why I say never pull your lid out because although you might get away with it for years and years and years it will catch up with you um, and if I don't stretch the lid out when I'm applying particularly a shimmer onto the lid in that first third there, I end up with um, with it packing loosely into the crease and throughout the day it ends up falling into my eye and down my face. It's very very painful. Especially if I've got my, you know, contact lens in this side because this side starts watering even though I've not got a contact lens in that one um, and because this side starts watering that sets this one off which I then have issues with the contact lens and oh, I'm going to grab a little bit of the orange and just re-establish a little bit Of the orange and 
a little bit of the red. And again, using my micellar pad. You heard that? That was my jaw clicking. I have great fun. My body makes all kinds of noises. clean this brush off because obviously I've just put some orange and some red back on it. It's a really fiery look and that's exactly what I wanted from this today. And I'm going with this flat brush and once I've applied the shimmer pigment to the brush I'll be wetting it with just this setting spray. You can use any wet spray that you want. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. Um, you can use a setting spray, a priming spray, a finishing spray. Um, I mean, you can even just use tap water. But never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Right, I just need to pause you and I'm in a lot of pain at the moment. Sorry about that folks. Normally when I'm zoomed in like this I can just pause and just seamlessly cut bits out when I get really bad pain like that. But that was just Oh, that took my breath away, so I'm really sorry I had to stop just there. Not that it will have delayed the film for you, of course. Right, so you can use any moisture that you want, but don't ever put a wet brush in a pressed pigment. I think that's where I'd got to. I'm going to use this, and I'm initially going to go into Duck, which is the... Um, shimmery yellow and then I might put some of this liquid gold over the top I haven't decided yet I'll see how the yellow looks first so I'll pack some of this onto the brush like so right so now this feral is wet. So I'm going to stick it in my knuckle and spin because you don't want moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds the bristles. Right so this side I can do normally. Or I can just use the pressure of the brush straighten the lid out as I apply the shadow and you can see that's really pretty I'm just going to use the tip of the bristle just to blend it in with the red at the edge there now, obviously, dry the brush, reload it, and I'll show you how I do the other eye so that I cause as little additional damage to my eye as possible. So if you already have the same issue as me, this is how I deal with it. I only straighten the lid out far enough to straighten the creases. I don't pull it out to my ear roll or anything. 
when I apply the shadow as quickly and efficiently as I can. And then gently put the lid back so I don't just let it spring back. Okay. Dry the brush, add more pigment, and just finish the rest of the lid in the same way that I did this eye. And I think I am going to pop a little bit of that gold because this yellow is not popping as much as I wanted it to. Also gives me a chance to try this gold shadow out, which I've not tried yet. This is the Beauty Bay Living My Best Light liquid shadow. And it has a an applicator on it, not that I'm going to actually use that, I'm going to actually take some of it off onto my brush just so that I have more control over where I put it. Just popping a little bit of this on, so you can still see the yellow underneath, but it just gives it just that little bit extra oomph, if you know what I mean. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other eye. I like that. I've been a bit hesitant about using cream shadows and obviously I'm yet to see how they will last on my deep set eyes. But for now, I really like that look. Oakley doakley darlings, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to pop some uh, foundation and everything on and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, obviously I'm going to have to take a little bit of time to do all of that, but for you it's going to be completely instant. So I'll see you right now. Hey my lovelies, I am back. As you can see I did orange brows today because I really wanted to keep up the flaming look because, well why not really? Flat top brush I'm going to go in with Queen and I'm just going to run that 
Being very careful, obviously, I don't really want to fall out at this stage. Did my soap brows again. Not quite so werewolfy today, though. Last time I didn't have a full on. Uh, now, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's just a chunky flat top but chunky brush. Uh, you can use any blender brush really. And I'm going to go back into Rabar, which obviously is the matte yellow, and I'm going to use that just to buff that red out slightly. I was tempted to put a little bit of blue under here, but I think I want to keep the eyes completely warm. I don't want to add any coolness to the eyes at all. Unfortunately, I don't have a yellow, an orange, or a red um, pencil liner I can use. Hiccups, marvellous. However, I'm going to use this um, liner brush. That's the word I'm looking for. I'm going to go back into this liquid shadow. I'm just going to pop that just under the tear duct. Let's try that again, shall we? a little bit of mirroring to the top uh, eyelid. I do like to have a little bit of synchronicity. Right my darling ones I'm going to pause you for one last time and I will uh, put some lippy on some mascara, drown myself in setting spray and a highlight, do something with the hair and I'll be back with my finished look. Again, for you, instant. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, the highlight is my MAC Star Trek uh, Luna Luster uh, Trip the Light Fantastic Powder which doesn't look like much in the pan but ooh me likey um, Mascara is Benefit Bad Girl Bang Lippy actually is MAC again. It's one of their Powder Kiss liquid lipsticks in shade Escandalo. Um, I don't really know how I feel about them. I like how they feel on my lips. I just, I don't like this. This shaped. It's not easy to get a a good line and I don't have any red lip liners at the moment so um takes a little bit of finessing 
but I just I thought it was it was equally bright enough to uh, match the eyes today. Right, this is oh, right hand makes you receive money, doesn't it? Oh, maybe I'm going to win the lottery. Maybe I should enter the lottery so I can win the lottery. Anyway. This is, of course, a pic, or a photo inspiration film, which means, of course, there is a second film you can watch, based upon the inspiration photo, which of course is whiskey, fast frozen and looked at under, I think it's an electron microscope, but don't quote me. This is the look that I have produced from it. Completely ignored the black unless you count mascara and the blue that's in it and I just went for the hot colours today. I was going to put a blue lippy on and then I remembered my escondolo and thought no let's go really bright with it, why not? So this is my interpretation of this. Now the big question is what will Katie do? She is, of course, make up for lost time. She is absolutely fantastic. I love, 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 love watching her. So full of energy and she does some of the most stunning eye looks I've ever seen. I mean, this woman should be at the same level as Nikki Tutorial's Manny MUA. James Charles, she is that good, but she doesn't know she's that good, which is very refreshing. She's also stunning, and she doesn't know that either, which is equally refreshing. So, once you have left me a little bit of a comment on how you would have interpreted that, and a like, and Maybe a cheeky little share, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need you to go across to Katie's channel. I'm going to need you to watch her film. And I'm going to need you to do all the good YouTuber -y things like comment, share, subscribe, etc. etc. And show her the same love you always show me. What I'm also going to need you to do. If you're one of my 4F babies, please check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people, but they're leaving my films in your list, so it's not obvious you've been unsubscribed. If you have um, already subscribed to Katie, check her too. In fact, check all the channels you're subscribed to, and just make sure you're still subscribed to them. Because YouTube are not being very nice to smaller creators right now. In fact, they're being downright assholes to smaller creators right now. If you are here from Katie's channel, or you have tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. This is pretty much what you're going to get on my channel. Uh, me leathering on about all kinds of everything and nothing all at the same time in what I'm told is a soothing voice usually whilst applying coloured pigments to various parts of my face sometimes it goes well sometimes not so much <laughs> however I will always deliver it with a smile Sometimes a grimace, but it, it classes as a smile. Uh, so if you've enjoyed it and feel like you would like to join the 4F family, which is the nicest family on YouTube, it's super easy to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope YouTube are actually going to start sending them again soon. 
In the meantime, as well as this rather large backside I'm sitting on, I have a rather large back catalogue of films you can watch. I mean, there's the preceding 50 episodes of this series, for example, if this is the kind of thing that interests you, seeing how two people take exactly the same colours and exactly the same image and see how they are inspired to produce different looks. Um, I've got product reviews, I've got um, other tutorials, other collabs, palette bingos, I've got a Zodiac series that I really must restart again because I kind of stalled at, at Aries and I need to get going because my star sign is Taurus so I really need to get my teeth back into that one again but I've got a lot of um, palettes that I need to go through first I even read you my favourite poem in one film so there's going to be something that will interest you oh my mind tends to wander off without me sometimes but it, it usually comes back so if that's the kind of thing that you feel like you could enjoy watching for a bit and you need a bit of me time, I've said it now for years. Grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy and just chill out with a coffee and a custard cream or a donut and a Diet Coke. <coughs> And that's quite enough alliteration for one day before I end up going down an area I really shouldn't. Right, my lovely ones, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.